Hello. Thank you for coming to Rolls Battery Engineering's webinar series. Today we're going to talk a little bit about battery bank commissioning. Just to start off, uh, my name is Steve Higgins. I'm the Technical Services Manager for Rolls Battery. Uh, here's my contact information. Uh, I travel quite a bit during the year, so the best way to get a hold of me usually is via email, and that's steve at threat.com. I am based on the West Coast of the United States, and my direct mobile number is the 206 number that you see. Or if you want to call the plant, uh, you can call the 902 number. If you want to call an 800 number, you can call the 800 number and then dial 4020 for the extension. So what we're going to talk about primarily is battery bank commissioning. The very first thing that we're going to talk about is the most important thing. And where it happens, this happens quite often, is you want to verify that the batteries are not physically damaged when the when that pallet shows up. So what happens is quite often, well not quite often, but what can happen uh, is the pallet will show up, you sign for it, driver drives away, you open it up, and you find out that the one of the one of the tops is cracked, or one of the sides are cracked, and the electrolytes spilled out all over the place, or uh, it could be a whole host of things. I've actually seen batteries, uh, shipments where the shipper has dumped an entire battery of entire pile of two YS 31s and put them back on, fill them with water, re, re, re shrink wrap them, deliver them, and then a whole pile of uh, eight batteries out of 24 uh, just refused to accept the charge because all the electrolyte was sitting alongside the road somewhere. Uh, so it's very important that. You, you, when you get the pallet off the truck, you tear, you, you tear off the shrink wrap, you inspect the batteries, take a look inside the uh, vent wells to make sure the electrolytes relatively uniform. It's not going to be perfect, but make sure it's relatively uniform. Uh, take a look at the, the sides of the batteries, make sure that they, they didn't take a hit, move the batteries around a little bit, make sure there's no, there's no hidden damage down below. Um, this is very important to do because if you accept this shipment and the driver drives away and you sign it off as a good received shipment, even if you've notated damage on the form, very rarely will you, unless you unless you bring lawyers involved, very rarely will the shipping company pay uh, to get the battery uh, replaced. Uh, this is not a manufacturing default. I defect. I get lots of people that call me up, want me to warranty batteries that have been damaged in a in a shipping accident. Uh, and it's not really a shipping issue. Or, I'm sorry, it's not really a manufacturing issue. It's a, it's a, it's a handling issue with shipping. Uh, we often find this with you LTL freight shipments, where you'll, you'll, it'll be the, the product, the shipment will be handed over to a secondary shipper, who will then uh, throw it in a truck with a bunch of other stuff. Even they'll even stack stuff on top of the batteries, and that causes a lot of damage to the posts and things. Uh, so be careful there. Um, uh, you should not need to add electrolyte to new flooded batteries at all. They come with the electrolyte that should be in them, in them. Uh, I get customers every once in a while who will call me and ask me uh, or say, yeah, someone told me that uh, you guys ship them just the electrolyte just above the plate and we're supposed to let, add electrolyte to them. That is false. Uh, it's another one of those wise tales. Uh, be careful of that because um, the, the uh, what what can happen is is going back to the first point is shippers will dump them and then if they you know they'll just dump them put them back on the pallet re shrink wrap them and we'll call it good. So um, when filling, if you are going to fill, uh, the only thing you should really ever have to put in the batteries is the spilled water unless you have spilled them, and, and if you've spilled them, you want to fill up with 1265 electrolyte. But when filling, you make sure that you're only using distilled water and you want to go, go to a half inch to a quarter inch below the very bottom of the fill tube. And the fill tube is a little piece of round plastic that extends into the battery. If you go closer to the top, closer to the bottom of that, as the battery is charging or if you're doing an equalization charge, the, the electrolyte has the possibility of overflowing out of the battery. And that's not a good thing either. Um, when you're using this, I mean, deionized water or reverse osmosis water, Try to get your pH as neutral as possible. Um, running too high or too low of a pH wa water will affect the battery life. Um, again, this goes to maintenance, but I'm going to say it. 
again, distilled water, deionized water, reverse osmosis water, reverse osmosis water. Do not top off with electrolyte. Do not top off with rainwater. Do not top off with lake water. Do not top off with river water. Do not top off with tap water or even drinking water. Uh, all those all those different waters have high concentrations of total dissolved solids. When those total dissolved solids are introduced into the battery, they begin to corrode the plates and they begin to cause uh, failure of the batteries. When you get the batteries, take specific gravity measurements. All the cells should measure between 1250 and 1265 if the batteries are within two to three months of manufacture. Um, if they aren't, then you're gonna you're, you just keep in mind you're gonna have to run that generator a little longer uh, to get those batteries to a full state once you get them out at site. If you have to do a charge, basically what you're doing is you're charging the batteries at a bulk and absorption voltage until the end amps is less than one percent of the C20. So if you have a thousand amp hour battery bank, when the charging current going into the battery is less than 10 amps for at least 30 minutes, those batteries are full. You don't have to worry about charging them anymore. Um, doing that, this also applies to batteries that have sit in storage. So if you get a distributor who's had a set of batteries for six or seven months, about every four, three to four months, depending on how warm the warehouse is, uh, he needs the, the distributor should be putting them on a, on a refresher charge. Typically about every three to four months, they, they need to boost them. Um, the hotter it is, the faster they, 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 they discharge. The cooler it is, the longer it takes the discharge. So this is an email I actually got from a, uh, from a customer. Uh, and this is actually what has spurred this webinar. Um, basically, the customer wrote to me and said they ordered some 24 2Ys, 31s. During transit, one of the pallets broke and seven of the batteries fell on their sides. Uh, they're saying about half to a little more than half of the electrolytes spilled out of the batteries. What should they do? Well, first of all, the very first thing they should have done is they could have accepted the, the partial shipment, but at a minimum, they needed to refuse that pallet of batteries. Probably they have to refuse the entire shipment, but at a minimum, they would have had to refuse that pallet of batteries because that freight company damaged those batteries. And so now what's happening is the, the customer wants us to replace those seven batteries under warranty because they were shipment damage, which is not a manufacturing defect. Okay, if, if, if you're doing this and you're, you're moving some batteries around and one tips over, put some 1265 specific gravity electrolyte, try to match the levels. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be better than, than putting just distilled water in them. Because that if you just put distilled water after you've spilled, you know, two gallons or three gallons of electrolyte out of the battery, that just dilutes the electrolyte and that battery is gonna have lower capacity than the rest of the batteries in the string. Um, the only way to make sure that the batteries haven't actually been damaged is to put them under a load test. Uh, basically you charge them up, you discharge them under a C10 discharge load and you'll, you'll be able to tell fairly quickly if the battery's got a, if you've snapped a, a, a weld or uh, the uh, a plate ear snapped or something, something's damaged internally. You'll see performance issues with that battery for sure. This next picture picture is kind of in the same 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 range. Basically, what this picture shows is this is a battery that we recently covered under warranty, but we shouldn't have covered under warranty because this customer ran these batteries dry. And what I mean they ran them dry is, can you see? The line here, we've got a line here across the battery. What that is, is that's almost like a flood line. All right, what happened was is the customer ran the batteries dry, exposed the plates to air. And so now what you've got is you've got this area up here that was exposed to air and it's actually started to oxidize. You can see the oxidation forming on the plates. Uh, that's gonna take away capacity to the battery. That's gonna cause a problem with the battery. So any battery that's been tipped and exposed, and then it has been exposed to oxygen for too long, uh, what'll happen is it'll start this process of, 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 of dying. Typically this battery, you're looking probably, uh, they probably ran it dry in the first six months of the battery and made the mistake. We replaced it on a warranty, assuming that everything was good. 
And so now, uh, uh, it wasn't performing very well. We replaced the battery. Of course, now it's performing great because they've got a new battery bank in there, but, uh, the rest of the batteries are probably going to also start showing this in the future. Um, all right. Now some suggestions for dealers and or installers. Uh, First, most important and suge suggestion for dealer installers, uh, and if you're an end user and you don't have one, get one. Get a hydrometer, get a voltmeter. Either a hydrometer could be a hydrometer or a refractometer, uh, and then a voltmeter. You should, you, that is minimum, minimal tools that you should always have at the site. Um, you know, using the hydrometer to check your specific gravities, uh, using the voltmeter to check your voltages at terminals or at cables or at inverters. Those are important things to have and when troubleshooting or when maintaining your system. Uh, for your dealer and dealers and installers, show your customers how to use a hydrometer. Um, you know, if it's a glass type hydrometer, show them how to, to squeeze the bulb and, and clear the, the, the bubbles. Show them how to hold the hydrometer because if you hold them at the wrong angles, they won't read correctly. Uh, if it's a box style, uh, you know, show them how to do that. Show them how to calibrate it. You know, if it's a hydrometer, you need, you need a known specific gravity battery acid to calibrate it. So you've got to get, go to the motorcycle shop or the automotive shop and buy a, a 1280 specific gravity battery acid to know how accurate your reading is. Uh, if it's a refractometer, it's a lot easier to calibrate because you can calibrate them to distilled water. You put a drop of distilled water on there. You set, the, set it at the water level, and now it's calibrated. Pretty easy to do. Uh, some customers will complain, well, I don't want to put, you know, they'll say I'm clumsy enough to, to, to I don't want a refractometer because I'm clumsy and I don't want to put battery acid that close to my eye. That's the reason why you do maintenance, that you wear safety, go safe, safety glasses. Um, you know, I mean, it's four or six inches. Up, some of them are seven inches away from your eye. But if you have safety glasses on, you don't have to worry about that. Don't assume that your customers will know how to do this or that they'll be able to figure it out on their own. Uh, most often, if they can't figure it out, they just don't do it. Um, explain and demonstrate how to top up flooded cells with distilled water, okay? Uh, better yet, give them a way, a method, a watering device to do that. Um, a lot of guys will sell the blue bottles. A lot of guys will show them how to do it with a, with a, with a measuring cup. What I like to do is I like to go to the local hardware store and pick up a weed sprayer, a one to two gallon weed sprayer. Uh, and you want to, the things you need to make sure is that the weed sprayer has a plastic wand. And so you take that plastic wand and you unscrew the nozzle or you cut the nozzle off. And now you've got a steady stream of water that comes out when once you pressurize it and you hit the, the, the trigger. Uh, you can attach a little LED light to that and you can mark the nozzle to where the customer needs to fill that battery up to makes it easier to want one of the batteries. Uh, last but not least for you installers or your, your dealers, provide a copy of our manual. Uh, we give them out uh, like candy on Halloween. Uh, same thing with the maintenance log books. If you need them, send us an email. Send me an email and I'll get you copies. Um, you can also download electronic versions on the, on the web. Uh, one, one of the things I like to do is give them a two inch binder uh, with the manual in it and a couple dozen printouts of the of the specific gravity uh, maintenance log book so they can log those specific gravities or at least spot check the cells. Um, so another thing that you do that's not that's not posted here is that when you do install the batteries, number them. You know, number them. String one cells one through twenty four. String two cells one through twenty four. That way, your customer is taking a consistent specific gravity measurement of the cells. So that way, you, that way you know what's going on without having to drive the, without without having to roll, roll a truck to go out there. So day of installation, uh, first things to do is number one, ensure the batteries get a full charge every five to seven days. Brand new batteries, especially lead antimony batteries, they want to cycle, they want to exercise. So charge them up, you know, charge them up at the shop, bring them out to the site, charge them at the site. But get them to a full charge. Get them up, especially brand new batteries, get them up to that 1255, 1260 range. They're, it's going to take a little time for them to get into the 1270s, the 1260s, 1270s. But 
get them up into that 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 range. As they break in, they'll they'll gain capacity. Um, spot check. Have the customer spot check those cells. Specific gravities at least twice a week for the first week. You know, day day three or day four, and then again day seven. Go in there and and spot check them. You know, check cells. You know, check the even cells. Check the odd cells. Do something to 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 see where they're getting. You know. Uh, that way you can make adjustments to your charging voltage parameters based on where those specific gravities are getting. If you're coming in with a low specific gravity, add voltage or time to the absorption time settings. If you get a high specific gravity, re reduce your charging voltages or your charging times. Uh, just make small adjustments. Uh, don't, you, know, you don't want to make too big of adjustments, otherwise you're going to be all over the place. And then, of course, because you are charging them a little bit more, in the initial stages, check the water. Make sure you don't run them dry in those, you know, those beginning few first few weeks or first few months. Uh, just have them spot check the water to make sure. You know, if I'm going to sell a string of eight L16s uh, to a customer, typically what I would do is I'd bring about an extra 10 gallons of water out there just for that initial break-in period uh, for the customers. Uh, could be even could be less in, in colder environments. Uh, if you're doing the installation in the wintertime, could be more in the summertime environments. So weeks two, three, and four um, is a little bit of repetitiveness in this, so I apologize. But weeks two and three and four, instead of making sure you get a charge, a full charge every every seven or every 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 seven days, open that up, widen that window a little bit. Make sure that customer, you know, if the if the he's got if it's in the middle of the winter time, make sure they're running that generator to charge those batteries. If it's the middle of summertime, uh, have them spot check those specific gravities every few days or every, once a week. To make sure that they're getting to that 1265, 1275, you know, 1260, 1270 specific gravity range. Again, if you're getting low specific gravity, say they're coming to the 1230s, the 1240s, your voltage or your absorption times are too short, so you need to add voltage. If they're coming too high, if they're getting to the 1270s, 1280s, then you're going a little high, so you want to reduce your charging voltages. Um, and that way, you can fine tune where your settings need to be. Uh, check the water every 14 days. Again, making sure they run dry. Log this stuff. That's why you've given them a log book. Put the stuff in a log book. That way you can have an idea of, of, of what, where, how, what's going on with the system, uh, especially when you commissioned them. Um, month, uh, now we go from so month one to month three. So we're 30 days to 90 days into it. Again, now we're opening the window a little longer. Instead of every seven to 10 days or every seven to 10 to 14 days, now we're opening up the 14 to 21 days. Um, remember, the harder you work the batteries, the more often they're going to need a full charge. What that means is, is if I'm cycling my batteries, you know, say 20 to 30% every single day, I'm going to need a full charge about once a week, once every 10 days. If I'm cycling those batteries about once every four to five days, that's going to be, that's going to, window's going to be open up to about 16 to 20 days. So the harder you work them, the more often they want to see that full charge. If they're lightly worked, they don't need that full charge all the time. Um, check the specific gravities, you know, for those first two or three months every every couple of weeks. Just spot check them. You don't have to check every single one of them. Just spot check them. Again, if you see the specific gravities going high or low, add or re reduce your voltages or and or your absorption times to compensate. Um, then, of course, now you can you you're you have a better idea what's going on with the water. Excuse me. You have a better idea what's going going on with the water, so now you can open up your your water checking times to ensure everything's everything's going the way it's going. So, so now we open up for six to twelve months again. Again, everything's kind of repetitive. This is the kind of stuff that you want to do for the first year of the battery life. You're looking at those specific gravities. You're logging the specific gravities. Uh, oh, that should be every forty five to sixty days. That was good. Um, Make sure you you know check your, your specific gravities don't need to be checked all the time because now you kind of have a better grasp of what your settings need to be. Um, there is no magic bullet when it comes to settings. Every system is different because every customer is different. If you take ten different systems and you or ten of the same system and you put them into ten different customer sites, there's a good chance that you're going to have six, seven, maybe eight different programming settings between those customers. So don't assume that don't don't assume that your settings are perfect unless you're looking at your specific gravities and checking those. 
13 months to end of life. Uh, make changes to the charging voltage times based on information gathered year one. Uh, basically, what that means is is that for the, about the same times of the year, your charging set points should be the same depending on how much you're using them. You can open up your your specific gravity checks, you know, on the uh, and because now you have a better grasp of how that system's operating. You, you you can spot check your specific gravities every 60 90 days. You want to get a full reading about every 60 90 days, and the reason for that is is that when a battery starts to fail. When there's when there's if there's a if there's a problem with the battery, um, especially once you get past about 12 months of life, usually that that problem develops over a period of time. The faster you detect that problem or that issue, the less damage you're going to cause to the rest of the bank by not doing it. If you're not doing your maintenance and you're not looking at your specific gravities, you could spend months and months and months in in, in bad conditions with the batteries, uh, where replacing one battery could be detrimental. Um, Keep in mind that changes in the seasons are, or the weather patterns are going to affect what your charging voltages are. Um, this year, uh, 2018, has been an interesting year for fires, especially in the western part of the country, northwest uh, Idaho, Montana, uh, Oregon. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, smoke from fogs up in, up in uh, British Columbia and Canada, from eastern Washington. We've seen a lot of smoke, so a lot of people's arrays aren't perform performing like you would expect them to perform. Keep in mind that stuff affects your charging capability. If you don't, if you're not charging with your array, you're not charging. And if you're not charging, then your batteries are sitting in a state of discharge over a long period of time, and that will cause issues. So my next slide is just a question slide. Uh, if you have any questions, again, my contact information is uh, is here. Uh, feel free to fire me an email at steve at um, or you can give me a call if you wish. I'd be more than happy to talk to you on the phone. Uh, this is this is a lot, of, especially if we can get the stuff hammered out early. Uh, we can get the the we can get the problems taken care of before they become problems. Uh, again, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Uh, you have a good day.